Well, 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 Tuesday again, is it? It comes around. And this week, we're doing something that I have wanted to do for ages. I just haven't had the right photo to be able to do this tutorial, but I finally have it. We're gonna talk about how you can deal with mixed lighting, where you have different color temperatures within the scene. Maybe you've got some difficult lighting as well when it comes to some areas are very bright, some areas are very dark. This absolutely can happen at events, right? If you're photographing an event, you have very limited control over what the lighting is going to look like. That's absolutely the case here. I was photographing an event, the Society's Photo and Video Show in London. I was photographing our stand and it was difficult lighting, right? It's difficult to deal with mixed color temperatures, all the things. We're going to dive into fixing it. Let's get into it. Let's roll that intro. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every Tuesday, every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh, mm, and this is a fresh one. <laughs> Let's dive into it, because this is the photo that we're going to be working with. So, this was taken on a 24 to 70, right? So, shot at 50 millimeters, f2.8, you know, we've got kind of okay ISO, it's not too crazy with the, in terms of noise and stuff like that, but we've got a lot of things to fix, right? Nice bright background dark subjects, not ideal, we need to fix that. So there's exposure things to fix. There's color issues with regards to the color temperature of different lighting that's affecting different parts of the image, right? We've got, we've got a few things to actually work with here. Now, immediately, part of my brain goes to one easy way to fix something like this, right? In this case, it's not gonna work, but we're still gonna look at it. One way you can deal with mixed color temperatures like this or difficult lighting is to take your image into black and white. So you can just click this button up here, black and white, and then still address, you know, various issues with exposure and stuff like that. We'd still need to brighten our subjects, darken our background, stuff like that. But it does take away the issue of the color. And absolutely, I have done this before when I've had very difficult images. Sometimes black and white looks really good. In this case, we don't want to do that. We do want a color photo. But it's worth mentioning because immediately my photography kind of editing brain goes to that option. That's that's always an option for fixing difficult light, but that's not what we're gonna do. So let's dive into what we are going to do with this image. Now, the first thing I actually want to address, and I did say there wasn't really an issue with noise because shot at ISO 800, but actually in the darker areas of the image, we're probably gonna be pushing this up a little bit. Is there a little bit of noise here? Maybe. So what we can do is actually come straight down and just go ahead and click denoise. Now Lightroom has a great denoise feature. You know, we can even see it before and after of kind of what it's gonna look like. So when you click and move here, you can actually see the noise. And if you let go, you can see what Lightroom is gonna do to it, which is really gonna clean it up. Let's go ahead and click enhance. Let's let Lightroom do that. And then we've got a nice starting point for the image. Okay, great. So that is now a nice clean image with regards to noise. The next thing I might do is just come down to enable profile corrections, just to get rid of any kind of vignetting or distortion. There's not really much on this lens, but it's, it's always a good thing to just turn on at the start of the edit. So you know exactly where you are, right? I'm also gonna click auto on the transform tab. That's gonna help just straighten up some of these vertical lines. We've got quite a few of these throughout the image. And just because the angle that I was at, I'm trying to shoot up a little bit, right? We end up with some slightly wonky lines. This just helps to fix that as well. Okay, great. This is looking really good, I think. So we've got a great starting point to now try and fix some of these exposure issues and the color issues. Let's come up to kind of a global edit now. That's where we're affecting the entire photo. I'm going to bring the highlights down because we've got to deal with this slightly brighter area in the background. The shadows up a little bit. Great. Let's bring the clarity up just a touch, vibrance up a little bit and saturation just down a little bit. I think that can help even things out a little bit, which I quite like. Let's go ahead and bring the color temperature down a little bit into the sort of cooler areas. Not too much. And this is something we're gonna have to be careful with because we've got different, different feeling areas to the image. We're also gonna bring a little bit of green in because I, I feel like there's a bit too much magenta. Now I am just eyeballing it. We're not gonna be able to use much of a, a kind of other technique to do this because we've got this mixed lighting. But I think that's immediately looking a little bit better. Going forward, I think we're gonna to have to use masks to fix some of this. So first up, let's go ahead and bring in a radial gradient. I'm gonna bring in a big one across the middle here. I wanna encompass both of our subjects here. I'm just gonna bring that exposure up. I, I really just want to bump up the overall brightness of this middle part of the image, right? I want our subjects to be to be much brighter 
than they currently are. Okay, great. That is immediately looking quite a lot better. Let's bring in another radial gradient and do some work specifically on our subject. So one radial gradient over our subject here. And what we're going to do is actually bring the exposure up. You know, he's probably the, the main focal point of this image. And we do want him to be one of the brighter parts because we want to draw the viewer's eye right towards him. So we're going to brighten that up. That's, that's actually done quite a lot to help with the color issues. But let's also just cool things down a little bit with regards to the white balance. Add a little bit of green. You know what? That's looking quite a lot better. Let's turn that mask off just to see how much it's doing. So you can come up to the mask panel here. Just click on this eye icon. Look at that. That's without the mask. And that's with the mask. Great. You know what? I think that's looking pretty good. Let's actually go ahead and click add on this mask to add additional parts to it. I'm going to click on the brush. I'm just going to brush on some areas around here. There we go. Okay. That's looking pretty good. If you want to see your mask actually, you know, visualize it, you can press O on the keyboard to get the overlay of this mask. And you can see in red, that's where the mask is actually applied. Great. I think that's looking pretty good actually. Maybe just, just bring that down and touch. Okay, great. Let's do a mask over our customer here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same sort of thing. Bring up the exposure, cool the color temperature a little bit, a little bit of green because I think there's a bit too much magenta in there. I'm going to go ahead and add to the mask. Just want to get these skin tones as well. That's looking, that's looking pretty good. Again, if we turn this off, back on, you can see it is making quite a bit of difference. Okay, great. Do you know what? This is all starting to come together, isn't it? This is all starting to come together really quite nicely. Okay, let's bring in another radial gradient. This time I'm going to do a nice big one across the middle. What I want to do here is actually invert this, and then I'm just going to just bring the exposure down to darken the edges of the photo. Now, this is basically doing a bit of a vignette here. So I want to make this nice and big and then sort of center it up a bit. Something like something like that. I want to center it between our two subjects here. And again, if we turn this off, it'll be quite a subtle difference, but it's just darkening those edges, just pulling our viewer's eye towards that kind of central part of the image between our subjects here. Okay, great. I might even come in and do a bit of an overall bump and exposure, something like this. I think that's actually looking pretty good. Let's press the backslash key on the keyboard to see a before and after. So this is kind of where we started. This is where we've got to. So you can see we've massively dealt with the exposure issues before and after. And we have significantly addressed things like the, the color kind of balance between our subjects and the background and stuff like that. So this is starting to look a lot, lot better. Let's come down to the HSL tab. Now we might not want to do too much with this, but if I was to address things like the hue of the orange, it's going to really affect those skin tones. So we don't want to go too crazy there. Maybe even bring this slightly over to the right, which is which is not something I would normally do, but I think for this image, maybe it does, maybe it does help a little bit. And then the yellows, maybe we can come down towards the orange. Blues, we could maybe bring over to the teal just a touch. Saturation, I might want to bring that blue down just a tiny bit so that we're we're just pulling out of this kind of upper part of the image, which is maybe a little bit distracting. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And I might even just bring the magenta down as well within the saturation. All right, that's that's actually looking pretty good. If we come down here to the calibration right at the bottom, the red primary, I'm just going to ease over to the right towards the orange, blue primary, ease towards the teal. I'm going to tell you why. This image has a lot of orange and blue in it. It feels like it, it almost wants to be a bit, a little bit orange and teal. So let's before and after it. So this is before, this is after. I think this is actually starting to really come together. Okay, great. You know what? I'm really happy with that. I think we're coming towards where we can get this image to, which is really nice. What we might want to do, let's experiment a tiny bit. So let's, sorry, let's turn that vignette back on. Let's go ahead and bring the linear gradient in from the top here. But what I'm going to do is actually right click on this new mask, intersect mask with select background. Now this is going to only apply this mask behind our subjects. Look at that. Perfect. You can see the red overlay. You can see how that's applied. Let's bring that exposure down just a touch. It's going to help to darken that top part of the image. And it's also going to help to just provide a little bit of pop and separation between our subjects and background. Okay, that's that's looking pretty good. Let's do, let's do the same thing from the bottom up. This time we're not going to intersect it. Let's do something like this. And I'm just going to move it down so it's, it's nicely feathered. 
let's darken it a touch. Again, this is a technique to just sort of sandwich in the image, draw our viewer's eye into that kind of central part. Great. I think this is looking really nice. I might just do one more. I'm going to do quite a big radial gradient in the middle here. It's nicely feathered and just, just bump the exposure a little bit. Just bring that up. Let's see what happens if we just cool it, add a little touch of green as well, because it just can't help but feel there's a bit of magenta in there. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's look at the before and after. This is before, this is after. The last thing I want to do, I just want to add a bit more separation between our subjects and the background here. I still want to be able to see the background, but I'm going to come all the way down to lens blur on the right here. Let's click apply. And Lightroom is going to analyze the photo, work out a depth map, and then apply some kind of additional depth of field effects, right? So a, a bit of bokeh, a bit of out of focus, kind of shallow depth of field, uh, feel to the image. It's done a really good job, actually, immediately. If we turn the lens blur off, we can actually click and hold this eye icon on the lens blur. This is what it looks without, and this is what it looks with. So without, and then with. I think that's adding a fair amount to the image. Maybe if we bring this down to maybe 40 on the blur amount. I think that's actually looking really nice. So again, an overall before and then after. Lovely. Lovely. Considering how difficult the lighting was with this image, considering how much we've had to do for the exposure, for the color, I actually think that this has ended up coming out really nicely. And I'm actually really happy with the image. Now, again, if you want to go in black and white, you absolutely could. And you'll see now immediately because of the exposure work we've done, I think that actually looks really nice in black and white as well. But for the purposes of the photo, which is a photo that we will almost definitely use, I think it looks really good in color. I think we've made this work and we've kind of fixed those issues. I'd love to know, is there anything else that you would do that I haven't done here? Maybe you wouldn't have gone so far in certain areas. I'd love to know, what would you do differently? What would, what kind of, what takes your eye that I haven't noticed? That's always super interesting. Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, is there something else you'd like to see in a future tutorial Tuesday? I'm always keen to make the ones that you want to see. So let me know in the comments if there's anything that you would like to know about. Some of our, some of our best ones and some of my favorite ones to make have been suggestions from the comments. So let me know, I'm always keen to make those ones. There's of course a full list of all the kit we use for these videos, for this photo, for all that stuff down in the description so you can check that out for yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well because there's new content all the time. I will of course see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.